This video does not dispense medical advice or prescribe the use of any technique or form of treatment or physical or medical problems without the advice of a physician, either directly or indirectly. The intent is only to offer information in a general nature to help you in your quest of emotional and spiritual well-being. Suppose you do use this information in this video for yourself, which is your constitutional right. In that case, I assume no responsibility for your actions. I do encourage you, though, to actually not take this information as pure facts, but to watch and observe and to see the potential outcomes of the subject mentioned in this video. The software used in this video is called Time Nomad, which is only available in the Apple Store. Suppose you do not have access to it due to some type of limitation, or you do not have any access to the Apple Store due to having an Android or anything else of that nature. I do recommend you to actually use a app called Astrovisor, which is available at the Apple and Google Play Store. The links are both at the description. I hope you enjoy this video. Hello everyone, I'm Astraeus. Today we're going to be looking at the birth chart of Fusli. We're going to be paying attention to her standard zodiac 12 chart at the geocentric longitudes and declinations. So before we get into the actual video itself, we're going to be talking about what I focus on. So what I focus on is Magi Astrology, which is a variation of an actual scientific-based astrology. There's quite a few of them. <clears throat> and Magi Astrology, as I mentioned, is scientific-based, but is also made by the Magi Society, hence why it's called Magi Astrology. What it is, it's mainly the correlation study between the celestial bodies to the behaviors, activities by humans, natures, and even man-made things. And of course, how the research is done is through mathematics, data science, computer science, and many other science and branches and techniques. So, here are some of the few differences between Magi astrology and traditional astrology. So, Magi astrology uses small orbs. There is no housing systems whatsoever. Zodiac sign interpretations are usually not used at all. Time of birth is not really needed. Interpretations are based upon statistical evidence. And also teachings, laws, and techniques must be reliable, accurate, and consistent to what is shown from the statistical standards. Traditional astrology usually would have large orbs. Housing systems are definitely implemented. Zodiac sign interpretations are always present. Time of birth is needed. Methods and techniques usually are used and passed down because of tradition or beliefs or even some type of philosophical idea or philosophy. In astrology, especially in major astrology, there is three basic like rules that will be consistently used when analyzing a chart, or in this case, reading a birth chart or any other kind of chart. One, the celestial bodies and or midpoints that are included in a geometric pattern, especially if there's multiple or more significant patterns, especially if they are symmetrical patterns, mainly because they are rare compared to asymmetrical. If a geometric pattern is closer to a peak, the more influence it has. And if the pattern is more up considered applying, it will very much be more potent compared to if the alignment begins to separate. Now, if the pattern also has very powerful celestial bodies and or midpoints included, such as Saturn, Jupiter, Chiron, Ixion, and so forth, as you see here, or any midpoints that includes the celestial bodies or a combination of the two, for example, like a Saturn, Jupiter midpoint or something of that sorts, then it's something that definitely be, make it more important and should be keep noted. Also, of course, keep in mind, in the event, if any uh, planetary geometry isn't really involved or it's not present whatsoever, then you must apply the two rules to the aspects alone. A simplification explanation of what an aspect is in astrology is an actually 
is the angle between two celestial bodies and our points. So what is a midpoint? You'd probably be asking yourself that mainly because it was mentioned in the rules. I do mention, and we'll give you in greater details what they are, however, we will not be going over them. But this is just additional information that may be of use for you. A midpoint would refer to two point, an equal distance precisely between two celestial bodies. These bodies, for example, let's say they are 60 degrees apart. So let's, the midpoint will be 30 degrees apart. This will be considered the close midpoint because it's the closest between the two. However, there's also an additional point in the longitude alignments, which will be 180 degrees apart from the 30 degrees point. So as a result, now the far part between the two celestial bodies would be 150 degrees apart between them, while the closest would be 30 degrees. Now, what this rule will also state is whichever side is involved in a powerful alignment, or in this case, a symmetrical pattern, that side will be considered very positive, will, will be the most vital part of that midpoint. So, an additional piece of information that should be kept in mind is just because they're on opposite sides does not mean they have different interpretations. The interpretations will stay the same. Is this they're on complete opposite sides depending on which side you are looking at. Now, midpoint equivalence is essentially a rule or a law that states that every single midpoint will interact with other midpoints and celestial bodies the exact same way a planet would interact with the others. So essentially, view a midpoint or treat it exactly like a planet, and of course, other midpoints, when they interact with other midpoints, like other planets interacting with other planets, or other celestial bodies to be exact. Now, we are looking at the coordinates for Fusli's birth chart. Now, if you notice over here, this is all the longitude of the geocentric chart for her. Over here, this is the latitudes. Now, you may notice that the moon is missing for the longitudes, but is present for the latitude. Reason why this is the case is because the moon moves 13 degrees every single day. Now, the fact that we use small orbs, even if we expanded them, we actually will have a huge amount of chance and larger room for error. To avoid the room of error, we'll get rid of the moon completely, but we'll leave it in the latitudes. Reason why we will leave it is because in the latitudes and declinations, the moon is actually very slow in moving, where it's almost day to day, or very much day to day, it will move to a different coordinate. As a result, we'll just leave it as such, because at least in the latitudes and declinations, we'll know what alignments are true, regardless of point of time of day. However, with the longitudes, we wouldn't know anything. Now, we're looking at Fusli's actual chart. Now, this may seem like a lot for you to process, but we will break it down according to the three basic rules of how to read a chart and you actually see how it all starts to play together. Okay, so right here we have a small grand trine that is created by Vesta, Jupiter, and Ceres. So this, so now let's look at what each planet has in common. Well, Jupiter, not really a financial planet, does aid a very beneficiary for financial planets which Ceres is a financial planet, and again, Vesta is similar to Jupiter in the sense it's not necessarily a financial planet, but it will assist greatly for them. So we see an amplified interaction of Ceres for business financial success for Fusli, especially if she is basically 
growing with it and also being generous with it with her loyalty fans, communities, and anything of that sort. By doing so, we'll see a massive growth in her income. And of course, it'll just be a never-ending pattern of her going in this upward trend where she may help others that especially need it with a loving, caring, and trusting-like attitude. And of course, this also can indicate that she has immense friendships that she can do business with as well. And of course, all these friendships will relatively be a peaceful and very encouragement and give her the ability to actually achieve the goals that she wants to do. Now we are looking at a T-square of Felicity's chart. This is made of Lilith, Juno, Uranus, Venus, and Pallas. Now, as mentioned before, we'll look for the similarities between these planets and or celestial bodies to see what is most likely to be the potential outcome. Well, we have two celestial bodies that have relations to technology, which is Uranus and Pallas. Two celestial bodies that have something to do with beauty, which is Venus and Juno. Though Juno is not necessarily a financial planet, it does aid somewhat in finances. And we have one rather malefic planet, and technically speaking, Juno if in harmful alignments can be rather malefic, which it is. However, this is a birth chart, so some cases, well, in majority of the case, wouldn't fully mean or dedicate much harm. So, in this case, if we were to look at the traditional perspectives, Juno in this harmful alignment would actually be canceled a lot, canceled because of this conjunction it will basically overpower the whole pattern as a whole. As a result, even if we were to look at it traditionally speaking, this will actually be viewed rather positively. Now, let's put it all together of what is known. So this can indicate that Fusli can actually make money through the use of digital products and our services, or in this case, content creation, or even through the music industry, music production, film, or even through the use of video games or other digital products. Through the use of basically a quote, rock star-like life, or through the use of beauty and basically bringing dreams into reality. Especially, as you can see here, through online, symbolized by Uranus, on a global-like scale. The only issue is she may have some issues with her personal demons, which may hinder it, or, if used wisely, can actually bring a nice little piece of entertainment of using her despair or even form of negativity or sense of hopelessness as a motive to basically be entertaining. Of course, this can go the other way around where basically the sense of hopelessness due to basically lying, her herself, lying to herself can definitely harm her ability online and even content creation and even form a self-worth as well. However, again, like I mentioned, that's less likely to be the case since this powerful alignment over here and including of these three powerful celestial bodies. So if it does arise, it can also easily be demolished and be set to a positive motion where she can actually gain a good sense of self-worth, especially towards working and making products and services that of course are digital and for entertainment purposes only online. And of course it will be presented in such a way where she can present despair or negativity in a comedic-like way to bring more entertainment.
right here we have what is regarded as a I pattern and this is made of Icarus, Cetus, and Vesta. What this will indicate is that through the use of friends or from the help of friends in her financial businesses it's almost bound to happen to some degree or may appear out of control where the success and friendships both will grow continuously together and also the products and services that she does provide such as her merch or whatever the case may be or being funny or genuine will also increase the success and wealth of her own well-being. Right here we have a rising ramp made from Lilith, Pallas, Venus, Uranus, and Saturn. Now what we should look for common is we have two celestial bodies of course still of technology, one of finance. Technically Saturn wouldn't help with is a could contribute to finances However, it will most likely hinder. However, Lilith also will add in to it. But of course, again, this is a birth chart, so those rules won't necessarily apply fully or at all. So what we can see is through the use creating or the cash flow from digital products and or services or from her content creation would definitely be in a controlled manner and actually will be able to help her to gain control online of the public as well through rather a cynical sense of humor or quote bad deeds <laughs> through online and her entertainment centers whenever Foosley tends to be rather mischievous those videos are a good chance of being rather popular compared to ones where she is just sweet Though of course her personality may be fully sweet Again, the more mischievous or rather little demon-like behavior is what helps her gain control of the public entertainment-wise. Now we have a mystical triangle made from Lilith, Saturn, and Juno. All these celestial bodies are rather somewhat separate, but we do have a form of alignment of control, deception through deviant or other bad deeds or sense of negativity and or hopelessness. So we could see that she may actually have full control of basically giving a negative feeling or entertainment like sense or give the illusion that she is quote unquote being a negative or rather angry about something which in some cases for example let's say her Mario Party videos she may have some type of like resentment but of course it's all entertainment or an illusion of how she truly feels she may in fact be competitive still but of course at the end of the day it's not going to really bother her however the downside of this alignment can also indicate that she may be going down, she could in fact go down a rabbit hole in a sense of feeling absolute dread and basically in a sense imposter syndrome which she may have mentioned in one of her interviews not sure which one because there's quite a couple one of them mentioned that though and this alignment of course is what is most likely the main cause of it or at least contributes in some way over here we have another ramp triangle a Cetus, Icarus and Jupiter Jupiter as I mentioned before is a very beneficiary planet plus since it's interacting with Cetus this can indicate a massive growth in financial success or material materialistic goals that are just bound to happen also the ability to basically take care or protect others 
again would again basically increase some type of goal or even some type of wealth. So there's like a growth of basically type of wealth of that is bound to happen by protecting others. So there's a sense of higher beneficiary alignments is bound to happen of unseen unknown blessings. Right here we have an asymmetrical pattern of Pluto, South Nod, North Nod, and Chiron. Pluto, this will represent that her confidence is very much something that was is going to be directed to help build her future, of course, from the past experiences. Of course, this also can indicate in the past she most likely have been very confident or someone of power or of wealth. Also, maybe someone who is rather impulsive or obsessed with having secrets or knowing secrets. And very much a person who is rather successful and true with those secrets, especially when it comes to being distinguished or having a rather positive, noteworthy image. This also, as I mentioned before, she was both in the past and even to her present and even in the future. She'll very much have a very positive image. She may, in fact, be rather noteworthy to some degree, mostly because of her charisma, career, and reputation as well. Right here we have just the pure aspects by themselves. We'll focus here. Mercury is interacting with Mars and it is bi-directional, meaning that two planets are going different directions. Mercury is in a retrograde motion while Mars is in a direct motion. This will indicate that she is actually rather quick-minded or someone to put actions into words first, or rather words or thoughts into action before thinking. She's also rather have quick reflexes. She's also someone who may be, in fact, have a competitive mindset or speak very competitively. Edis interacts with Neptune and Uranus. Neptune and Uranus, this will indicate that she has originality, a creative originality. She may, in fact, be, she may contribute to some type of revolutionary long term trends, especially that will make shift something new. She is very distinctive when she does create something, especially on a global like scale. And according to Peter, if he if I remember correctly, he did mention something on like or Fusli's first merch had some interesting looks, was very rather distinctive, which again it contributes to her creativity and a very unique perspective. Now let's look at her declinations. The sun and moon are parallel to one another. This can indicate that she, both her mind, well, her and her emotions and intuitive thoughts and thinking is very much in sync. Her emotions is also very much like from interacts with Neptune. So this will also indicate that she as a person is rather in tune with her beliefs or her spirituality. Her emotions is very much in tune to it. Mercury and Saturn and Vesta all interact with each other in a rather magi pyramid. This will interact and this will indicate that through her communication she is actually rather have a scientific like mindset or rather narrow minded especially when it comes to her friends or how she'll work with others in a networking-like state. 
This can also indicate that she may communicate with others in a friendly like tone, while also being rather direct or all about business. Or she may be friendly but also talk in a very authoritarian like state. Mars contraparallel with Uranus, this will indicate that she is actually a very competitive individual. She is also most likely to be in she may have athletic like abilities, especially with quick reflexes or a sense of balance. This also can indicate that she can also put action for entertainment or even in the fields of politics or anything that's either supported by the masses. So again, entertainment or politics, for example. Also, she is capable of interacting with change rather successfully as well. Mars also contraparallel and parallel north and south mod. This will indicate that she is an individual, and the same can be said for Uranus, is she is an individual who will build karma or have good experience with building her future in a set when in entertainment or even in sports. Also, of course, in either politics if she chooses to do so. Jupiter contra parallel with Pallas. This will indicate that she has a very good sound of judgment. She can easily plan and gain massive benefits. She's rather blessed or can easily grow as a content creator, a musician, or anything else that basically is use of digital products and our services or require planning, for example, even like a choreographer. Saturn parallel oh um Eris parallels with Lilith. This can indicate that Basically, what she causes as a makeshift change that is rather revolutionary to some degree is the use of negativity or a sense of hopelessness in a comedic -like way. Here are my Magi astrology resources. Oh, well, here you can also get your uh, scientific space astrology sources. Keep in mind, all these three books are out of print. And even rare so in some cases if you were to buy these copies if some do exist still for sale they can be up a few hundreds of dollars so what I have done is I have provided the first book astrology really works and the third book the key of success in love and money in the links the descriptions the first one is a cover to cover ebook of a of the book and the, sec the third one right here is broken up to two ebooks. Over here are the non, -astro non scientific astrology sources. However, all these books that are in gold are in fact still in print, and you could buy a copy. The ones that are not are either rare or out of print, so prices can actually be very expensive depending on who and where you're getting it from. These are other astrology source, well, these are non-astrology resources, however, they are used. And all these books are in print, so you can easily get access to them. And thank you for watching. You can follow me on Instagram, Twitter, and Twitch, Facebook, YouTube, or Discord. And I hope all of you have an absolute wonderful day. Bye!